All right? Uh, Brothers and sisters, we came to lift you up, to encourage you, to open up the Word of God and stop leaning on Good morning, church. The time is now 1015. Let us go into worship. Let us worship in spirit and in truth. I hope everybody's had a good weekend and a blessed weekend. And let's give God some praise. Let us notice, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. And I just want to thank you. How's everybody doing today? Good. I want everybody to repeat after me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Good morning, Saints. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good Are you grateful to be here? Yes. Do you mean it when you say thank you, Lord? Yes. Praise so God. Praise God. It's automatic uh, for the believer to want to have on their lips praise. Yes. It's automatic for the believer to have a spirit of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, to praise him means to say thank you. Mm -hmm. And today, even though last week we talked about the dynamics of praising God, and we want to continue in that theme because we need to be praising people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That went over like a lead balloon. Yes. Let me try that again. <laughs> say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We ought to be people who uh, uh, want to praise God. Why? Because he is worthy to be praised, right? Amen. Maybe this will happen. We're going to uh, uh, stand on our feet right now, and we're going to uh, use as a devotional theme today the eternal word of life. The eternal word of life. For Christ is life, right? Yes. And when you have life you, and have it more abundantly, it means to be walking in harmony and fellowship with Christ. Amen? Amen. So we're going to switch it up a little bit today. All that you see on the screen is you. Okay? okay? Don't get scared. We're going to <laughs> hey, man, we're going to have a good time with this because it's all about, you know, praise and adoration to Almighty God. But what I'm going to do is turn on this light. Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to read first. I'm going to read from uh, the first epistle of John, uh, chapter 1. Verses 1 through 4, 
after which we are going to join in where it says all, okay? That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy, that your joy, that your joy may be full. Repeat, uh, all together. You are worthy of the Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, our hearts are bursting forth in praise and adoration as we consider who you are and your love for us. We just say thank you, Lord, today. And we come today uh, for the purpose of rendering unto you uh, expressions of thanksgiving and praise from the very depth of our heart. And we, uh, we honor you. We know that you are the creator and sustainer of all there is. And even, even those who are in rebellious to you, you give them the power and the strength even to reject you. We don't understand that, but we're amazed by it. For we understand that we once were wayward ourselves. And through your providential guidance and care and love and concern for us, you have allowed us to, to, to uh, be privy to and to perceive uh, your goodness through your gospel. And now we're here, dear God, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And we say thank you. We say praise you. All glory unto your name. We render on this day. For in his name we do pray. Amen. 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 But as you remain seat standing, uh, as our devotional team comes and, and lifts us up in song. Amen. 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 Yeah, I remember. Page 577 in our um, favorite song, the hymn books, page 577. <clears throat> if you have it, let us sing. Walking in sunlight, walking in sunlight, all of my journeys over the mountain or over the mountain well, through, through the deep hell. Now what Jesus has said, I'll, Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that, I promise divine that, I never can, never can fail. Shadows around me, the shadows above me, the shadows above me. I never conceal my, I never conceal my Savior and God. Hurting my soul, it's hurting my, hurting my 
for communion let us notice page 593 in our red books page 593 free waters let us together say there's a fountain free tis for you and me let us so to the brink and tis of 
fount of love from the source above, and He bids us all freely drink. And oh, will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Oh, tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. And oh, will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Oh, tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call, tis a fountain open. saints of God. Again, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Look upon each of your faces this morning. We now come to the part in our worship to the Lord today where we are commanded to commune with our Lord and we are to do this each and every Lord's day. Because we read in Acts 27, upon the first day of the week, the disciples, they came together to commune. After Adam and Eve sinned, that sin separated man from God. It broke the union that man had with God. So something had to be done that and something was needed in order to restore that perfect union back again. So God commanded man to offer up animal sacrifice on the altar. But that did not completely take away sin. It only rolled them ahead for a year and, and they had to do it all over again. So God needed a more perfect sacrifice. And the only perfect, pure, sinless sacrifice was his only begotten son, Jesus. He could fulfill that need. Jesus made his sacrifice by dying one time on the cross. And if we obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and if we are baptized for the remission of our sins, all our sins are washed away. God forgive you. And those sins are never remembered again. And now we come together to take this communion. And we take it to celebrate and to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Our Father, we come giving thanks for the gift that you have given us. For the gift of your Son, who gave his life for us. We thank you for this bread, which represents your son's body. And let us examine ourselves, Father, as we partake of it. And we are a thankful, Lord, for this cup, this fruit of the vine that represents your son's precious blood. We pray that our minds will go 
back to Calvary. Think of the suffering that was for our forgiveness. Now let us take this bread and this juice with pure hearts, minds on Jesus, so that we may receive all the benefits that are in it. And we're asking all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's a fountain free tears for come to another part in our worship to the Lord today called the collection. An example in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. We studied this in our Sunday school class. Yes, did. Not tithe given, but prosper given. Yes. Paul said, now concerning the collection for the saints as I have given orders to all the churches in Galatia. Even so do ye, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. The main part is for us to lay aside, as God has prospered us, and give it on the first day of the week. Let us pray. Father God, we are thankful for all of our many blessings that you give us day in and day out for blessing us to prosper in this life that we might have something to, for ourselves and also something to give back to you. So may we give it cheerfully and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on and sing. Come on and sing. Well, come on and sing. Lord, come on and sing. All the because we love the Lord. Well, come on and sing. Come on and sing. Come on and sing. Come on and sing. Come on and sing, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, because we love the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Well, come on, come on and sing, sing to my Lord, praise his name today, lift his holy name, my heart I be Oh, my Lord, I praise his holy name, lead to stay today. 
fast now. I think that's the way we're going to do it from now going forward. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Let us sing. What a fellowship, what a joy divine meaning on the everlasting love. Well now what a blessing this, what a peace in mind leaning on the everlasting On of the everlasting earth, well, I had a whole house right the path grows from day to day. I'm leaving on of the everlasting earth. You know that I'm leaning on Jesus. I'm leaning on You know I'm safe and secure from. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. If you could stand for Lord's words, please. We'll be reading Psalms 92, New King James Version. Psalms 92. And it reads, It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness at every night. On an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp, with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A sinless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. Verse 7. When the wicked... They spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, 
are on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies of O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Verse 11. My eye also has seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. Verse 15. To declare that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. This concludes scripture reading. Would you bow, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for being in our lives and for bringing us here today for this service. Amen. It is because of your grace and kindness and protection that we are able to be here. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come to you asking for prayers for the sick and shut in. We ask that you continue to bless and watch over them and give them the things that they are in need of. Yes. Father God, please accept our sacrifices of worship, praise, yes. and prayer. Amen. Forgive us of our sins so that we are acceptable in your sight and allow your holy name and spirit to be with us. Yes. Please give us your peace so that we may be able to understand the message from the speaker and amen. use it in our daily lives. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus' name, amen. amen. Trouble sometimes are here, feeling is hard with fear. Wait a Oh, oh. 
the last one up a little bit. Um, Brother Alvin, it's supposed to be harvest time, but <laughs> we're going to call an audible. Amen? Amen. Um, just so you guys know, a um, little bit of an announcement here real quick. Um, me and the praise leaders, our brothers, are going to be uh, singing at a concert for Father's Day uh, today at 3 o'clock. What church is that? At Cleves Memorial right down the street here. So getting the salt out of the salt shaker, if y'all want to come and support us today, you definitely are welcome to at 3 o'clock um, at Cleves Memorial. Amen. If you like what you hear. All right, so we're not going to do Harvest Time, but we're going to do one that Brother Gino loves to hear. And considering the, the message theme motif that we've been going on, I think that it's appropriate. Amen? Amen. I love to praise him well. I love to praise him. I love to praise him.
Let everybody that has breath give him praise. Amen. Let everybody say amen. amen. We are here today because of the goodness of God. <coughs> and everything that we do ought to reflect how much we appreciate the goodness of God. Amen. And there are a lot of things going on in this world in which we live. A lot of things, there's a lot of calamity. But every now and then you see a ray of sunshine that gives you a spark of hope, knowing that with God in control, everything is going to be all right. And so we're here today, we want to definitely acknowledge uh, the goodness of God. Our hearts are filled with joy and excitement. I want to thank these brothers who did an outstanding job uh, just ushering into that moment of, 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 of encounter with Almighty God. I appreciate them so very much, and I, I'm also pleased to see how they are beginning to, uh, people are taking note uh, that we are a people who not only know how to praise God, but seek to praise him on every opportunity. Amen. And even in this message today, we're going to highlight the fact that if we are people of praise, we're not worried about the praise police trying to restrict or codify our praise. No. We are the people who understand that God is good. Amen. Amen. And when you understand just how good God is, it becomes, to, it, it causes the restraints and constraints to fall off. And, you know, uh, there's a story about a lady who came to church, and she was just so engulfed in praise. She would get up and begin to just say hallelujah, amen, and praise the Lord. And, and some of our senior seasoned, I won't say seasoned, but our seasoned saints looked at her. Uh, with a sense of disgruntledness and, and, and began to kind of whisper, why don't she sit down? Mm -hmm. Little did they know what all the things that she had gone through the night before. Amen. And as she was on her, her, her last breath and uh, children were wayward and, and every circumstance seems to be stacked against her. God providentially came through for her. Yeah and delivered her from the very valley of the shadow of death. Uh, and therefore, she could not wait uh, to, to get up and go to Sunday go meet. <laughs> and when she got there, her heart was just so filled with the appreciation that stemmed from the understanding of how good God is and how he had demonstrated that goodness that she had to praise God. Sometimes you don't know what other folks are going through. Amen. Amen. You ought to say, whatever God's given you, can you give a little bit to me? Mm -hmm. So we can be together and in harmony as we give thanksgiving and praise to Almighty God. If you have your Bibles, turn to the uh, 92nd Division of the book of Psalm. I like to get there. Again, our hearts ought to be filled with joy and excitement. Are you excited to be here today? Amen. Tell the truth. Are you excited to be here today? Amen. Yeah, yeah, we ought to be excited. We ought to have a sense of anticipation of what God is doing in, in, in the midst of his people presence. This is not rope. This is not just a thing that we do because we don't have anything else to do. Uh, we have been traditionally doing it so long, but I wouldn't know what to do if we didn't have church because I've been doing it so long. No, 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 no. It is an opportunity to come into the presence of God. And we ought to approach that with a solemnity, but yet with a, uh, a, a excitement, an exclamation of joy. I was glad when they said it to me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. How glad are we today? Okay, so for those who are tuning in, we want to say welcome uh, to the services of the Lion Street Church of Christ. And we hope and pray that your time with us will be time well spent 
And as we go into this particular psalm, as we talk about sing praises to the Lord, praise us, uh, praise the Lord. Why? For he is good. Amen. I hope in your prayer that you can say that God has been good in your life. Amen. I hope that even through the maze of uh, adversity and calamity, you are able to see the providential hand of God keeping you, Amen. Uh, securing you, and navigating you safely to the other side. Now, we're going to go into this. I'm not going to be uh, long, but I want to try to, I want to be impactful. Because this psalm, it really helps us to, to answer the question, why, why worship? Why should we uh, come into this worship atmosphere? How, why should worship be the highlight? The highlight of every believer's day. Yo, we ought to be looking forward to worship. Right. You, you ought to have a sense of uh, anticipation and excitement. And on, 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 on Monday and on Tuesday, you're clocking the day. And as you go through the adversities of Wednesday, and if you deal with the trouble of Thursday, and, and the, uh, the frenzy of Friday, and then the, 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 the superficiality of Saturday, you can't wait till Sunday. And you can have an encounter with Almighty God. I want us to experience worship on a higher level. Now, mind you, <coughs> be careful. To experience worship on a higher level uh, means that you have fellowship with God on a deeper level. So if you want to have a higher level of your worship, you make sure your, your relationship is at a deeper level. You can't be on a superficial level with God and have a dynamic worship. Because that means if your God is too small, your worship is going to be small. Yeah. But if your God is big, then your worship is going to be humongous. Because we understand to have communion with Christ on a more intimate level is uh, because you are a witness for Christ on a more dynamic level. You can't have a dynamic witness unless you have a, a more uh, intimate relationship with Christ. I hope this is helping you. We ain't got started yet. Amen. I don't want to help you by setting the stage for why we worship Amen. and why our worship ought not be anemic. Amen. Our worship ought to be a crescendo of praise based on all the things that God has done for you. Amen. Don't sell him cheap. Uh, he, he, he does everything. The experience, uh, the benefit of the worship experience, it, it, it should be a life-altering experience. You can't leave here today uh, just the same as you were when you came here today. Right. There ought to be some kind of experience that makes you think along your way. And now, that, now God, I now realize how much you've done for me. Tell me, what do you have me to do for you? Right. And all throughout my week, and my journey through life is all about saying, God, what would you have me to do? I already know what you've done for me. Amen. I already appreciate what you've done for me. Amen. You know, if, if the building falls on me right now in my dying words, I'm going to say, praise God. Amen. For he has blessed me. He just transferred my address to the home office. I'm not aware about what man can do to me. Because I know that God's got my back. And if God's got your back, Amen. your back is God. Here we go. I want to draw attention to the superscription of this text. In the superscription, it says uh, a psalm or a song for the Sabbath day. A psalm or song for the Sabbath day. We're going to give a treatment to that as we go through this. But the first thing I want to give you, number one, as we talk about uh, singing praises uh, for he is good. In worship, we celebrate God's favor for the righteous. Write that down. Because people ask you, why do you go to worship? And we can give you a whole bunch of stuff, and we don't do this, and we do this, and all that kind of, I get all that. But we worship. Uh, in worship, we celebrate. Underline the word celebrate. Not underline we celebrate. We celebrate God's favor for the righteous. Now, notice what it says in this text. It says, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises 
unto thy name, O Most High. Show, show forth uh, thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, uh, with the solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad. Through thy work I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O oh Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Through our corporate worship, the community of faith uh, praises God for his tender mercies. Is that right? Uh, in form, uh, they are addressed to Jehovah in thankfulness, acknowledgement uh, of the privilege and joy of praise. See, in reality, uh, they are uh, for man to attest to the goodness of God and, and, and have gladness as you taste that he is good and to fill each day uh, and brighten every night about music and thanksgiving. You see, when you understand what God is doing for you, you have to have an appreciation for the temporal and spiritual blessings that we have in Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. Do you not know that we have temporal blessings as well as spiritual blessings in Christ? The whole, the whole thing is the goodness of God. Amen. And so therefore, don't even wait. See, since you, see, you have a good relationship with God, you're not even waiting around to get blessed before you say amen. amen. You can say hallelujah anyhow. Right. Because the victory has already been won in Jesus. So we can sometimes uh, begin to nitpick at our own little petty problems. And I'm not trying to diminish the severity of your problems. But when you look at your problems against the backdrop of the goodness of God, your problems are minuscule in comparison to who God is and what God is able to do and what he's willing to do to bless your life when you submit to him. You ought to give him some praise today. You ought to have a crescendo of hallelujah in your heart because of who he is and what he's been doing in your life, even when you knew it or not. Sometimes we are so oblivious to the goodness of God. Because we're, we're trying to ante up every, okay, this day, I had this happen, and that happened, and that happened. And the, the scale seemed to be uh, out of balance about all the bad things that happened in your life. And I forget every breath I take. Amen. And every, every step I make Amen. is all the goodness of God. Amen. Can't compare. Amen. It can't compare. And so therefore, notice these temporal and spiritual blessings that we find in Jesus. I don't have time to go into all that. You know your Bible. Go and look at Ephesians chapter 1, uh, 1 through 3, and uh, well, on down to 13 and 14, and you see how God has been blessing you. Yeah. See, all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places are found where? In Christ Jesus. Now, I'm not preaching this. Uh, this is not what I'm preaching on today. But understand, uh, salvation is positional. Spiritual blessings are positional. Y'all don't even understand me, do you? If any man be where? In Christ. He is a new creation. You have to be, if you want forgiveness of sin, you must be in Christ. If you want the Holy Spirit to indwell you, you must be in Christ. Salvation is positional. It's not, you know, who you are uh, and, and what you are. It's where you at. I know that don't make sense grammatically, but you get the picture. <laughs> Yeah, you get the picture. Notice, notice the gospel benefits. We have, through the gospel benefits, we have salvation in Jesus Christ. The gospel is the message uh, that helps us to understand in full detail, in living color, the love of God. And sometimes we don't see the good color picture of this thing. Sometimes we look at it in old black and white movies. But when you have it in living color, you can see more uh, perfectly. You can understand the depth, the height, the length, and the breadth of God's love for you. And how that was manifested and played itself out in Jesus Christ. But also we understand the gospel opportunity. Not only, not only the gospel benefit, but the gospel opportunity. That's where you and I come in. This is your shouting moment. This is where we have an opportunity to share the goodness of God with others. See, that's what this thing is all about. Jesus came and shared it with you. 
not for you to sit down like, oh, like a knot on a log and just go in the fact that he blessed you. But he blessed you so you can be a blessing to others. Amen. See, the perpetuation of this thing, we can understand the gospel opportunity. You know God will give you opportunities every day of your life. Amen. Now, every day of your life, God is opening doors and, and, and preventing pathways for you to effectively share your faith. Do you thank God for the gospel opportunities that he gives you? But not only that, there's something called the gospel ordinances. In other words, uh, the gospel, uh, obedience to the gospel brings you into that covenant relationship with Christ, right? Uh, you are saved as you obey the gospel. We'll talk about that a little later on. But you're saved by obeying the gospel, but you are transformed through the gospel ordinances. In other words, as you hear the word and you begin to study the word and the, the word begins you to give guidelines and principles and precepts on how you ought to live. As a believer, as a living stone, the royal priesthood, how should your uh, conduct be? What is your behavior now? As the word of God begins to transform you by the renewing of your mind. Understanding God's gospel, his whole organized body of truth as is outlined in the word of God, that is to shape you. It is to contour you. It is to transform you from what you wear to what God ultimately wants you to be. Amen. Gospel ordinances. Sometimes we cannot engage in uh, the gospel opportunity because we have fallen short in adhering to the gospel ordinances. Yeah, we ought to become new. Transformed through those ordinances. Notice, to be shaped into the image of Christ, that is the endeavor. That is the endeavor of the church, to present every man complete or mature in Christ Jesus. But watch this. So what are we to do? Notice this text tells us to thank and praise the Lord most high. When do we do that? We ought to do it in the morning. <laughs> yeah, we ought to do it in the morning. Uh, understanding his unfailing love. We ought to do it uh, in the evening, knowing and understanding his faithfulness. Amen. So I don't care what time of day it is. You ought to be praising God. Amen. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noon day. <coughs> late, late, late in the midnight hour. You ought to be praising God. Because he's worthy Amen. to be praised. Amen. And we understand that we praise him because of his unfailing love towards us. We praise him why? Because of his faithfulness uh, to his covenant promises to you, you, and you, and you over there. God loves you, and you want to praise him. Now, how? How do we praise him? Notice in singing in the Old Testament, they said, even with the ten strings, uh, with the flute and the harp. In other words, in a harmony of celebration, in liveliness, uh, we ought to be praising him. Don't get tripped up because of his harp in here. We're going to preach this thing anyway because the God wants us to understand the principle uh, is thanksgiving and gladness in your heart. Amen. Now, we have changed the instruments now. We speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, songs singing and making melody, yeah. not on the drum, uh, but on the heart. We just simply change instruments. Yes, yes I believe in instrumental music. The music of the heart, yes. plucking the heart strings. God is good. Amen. Notice, why do we do it? Well, because God is good. Because God is good. His actions and his thoughts are good. His provisions, what does he provide us? He provides us with strength. He provides you with victory. He, he provides you with growth opportunity. Everything you need, God says, I am your divine supply. All you need to do is just come to me. Yeah, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And if you bold enough, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you shall find what? Rest. Yeah. Notice. Notice. We show forth the loving kindness of God to the world. To the world. The world needs to know what we know. There's so many passages that flood my mind right now and I have to just pause because I'll start talking about the 10 lepers. I'll be talking about the four lepers over in 2 Kings. I'll be talking about, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Suffice to say, suffice to say, 
that we are to show forth the loving kindness of God to the whole world. You see, God showed his love for us in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus showed his love for us through service and sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. And notice, the saints should show her love with the fruit of our lips and with the heart. Does your heart, does your heart show forth the loving kindness of God? Does your attitude and action, this is for you now, this is for you. Say amen if you can, but if you can't, I understand. Okay, I ain't, I ain't going there. So they're saying, we have to ask ourselves, you know, uh, are my lips and is my heart showing the loving kindness of God? In other words, am I, are we encouraging one another in times of distress? There are some saints right now who are broken hearted. There are some saints who are going through some stressful moments. Can you uh, show forth the love of God by simply letting them know how much you can empathize with what they're going through right now? You may not be able to go in and, and write them a check. But you can check in. Mm-hmm. And let people know that you care. Amen. So yeah, brother, my, brother Mary, they got much, my, ink, my ink pen ran out of ink. <laughs> but I can still check in. I can still, and I can pray that God give me more resources. That I can be available for somebody else. It's a heart issue now. We're moving away from the you know, the formal settings of what, of ecclesiology and, and, and the liturg- liturgical movements. We're now moving into the practical evidence of your faith, the sincerity of your love. You know, when we, when we give, we have the two components of giving. We give to the building up of the church, but then we also give, uh, we show the, the, the sincerity of our love. Yeah. That's what we were talking about in love. Uh, uh, Bible study this morning. Yeah. You know, that giving that we talk about over in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And you're talking about the regular uh, contribution. It's t- it was talking contextually, it was talking about benevolent giving yeah. to those saints who were starving and were in another place. And they had boasted about they will give so much. And Paul said, I'm coming, to, I'm coming to, to, to take up that collection, you guys, but don't embarrass me about me getting there. You guys ain't have it together. I've been bragging on you to all the other churches over here. Now we get over here, you guys, lips white. You know, he said, I tell you what I want you to do. He said, I want every first day of the week lay back in store, set that aside. That's for that benevolent giving to those those he, those, those those Jews in Jerusalem who are destitute. You putting forth a love offering. Yeah. That is not the regulatory giving. I just want you to understand that. It's, see, regular giving is to show the sincerity of your faith. Actually, I'm, I said it wrong. It's to show your faith righteousness. By faith. Abel gave a more excellent f- sacrifice than Cain. That's showing he was what? Righteous. And then the other giving that we talk about so often is really to show the sincerity of your love. Can you help somebody else who's in need? Notice, notice. Uh, not only do we encourage one another from the distresses, uh, but we should exhibit thanksgiving and praise in everything we do for everything he has done. And we offer the highest praise. Notice there's the instrument of the ten string, and it points to David. He had certain uh, singers to and, 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 and players who played in different for different occasions. Different occasions, but in this jubilant uh, celebration, he's calling them to put on all the stops. We want to go forth in a crescendo of praise and thanksgiving to God. See. Notice that the superscription uh, of this book talks about the Sabbath day, right? I think now we understand we're not Sabbatarians, but in the Old Testament, they were. And through Christ, the resurrection of Christ, and the new covenant brought in new ordinances. Okay, so we worship on the first day of the week. But it doesn't change the fact that we ought to be praising God. 
it doesn't change the fact that we ought to be considering this as a celebration. Notice that Sabbath day was good to give thanks unto the Lord because it was a very fit opportunity for that service when man could on the Sabbath day, they didn't work. By the fact, it was forbidden for them to do certain things that would be construed as work. So it was to be a, a time where they were not encumbered by the day-to-day -day living activities. They were not caught up in the trappings of working and, and toiling and busyness. It was a time that they would just sit back. I was almost, I was almost getting ready to say and chill. I didn't want to say that. I'm going to use another word. They were ready to just sit down and just kind of relax and just suck in and just contemplate how God has been good to them. Remember back in the Old Testament when they, had, they, were, they were gathering manna? And they, every day they had to gather so much manna to eat on. And then when they gave, came down uh, the day before the Sabbath day, they would get two portions of manna so that they didn't have to go out gathering any manna on the Sabbath day. And God made sure that they had plenty to sustain them even on that day where they were forbidden to go out and do any work. But then notice the Bible says, I'm getting off my lesson a little bit, but I hope you understand. Uh, they came to Jesus because he was doing great things on the Sabbath day. And they began to ignore the miracle that he was doing, ignoring the good he was doing, and begin to say, oh, you can't do that on the Sabbath day. You can't raise this person from the dead. <laughs> well, let's ask the person who got raised. What do you think about it? <laughs> The bottom line is, uh, he said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. In other words, this is your moment uh, to relax, uh, to uh, be at ease, to not be encumbered by the goings and comings and the busyness of life, the toils and turbulence of life. That's why when God got through on, on the sixth day of creation, when he, when he finished that creation, the Bible says, on the next day, he did what? He rested. That does not mean that God was tired. He had completed the work of creation. And therefore, he gives us a picture of how we are to regard uh, that day. There always needs there always need to be a day where we can just stop, back, stop and just reflect on God. Does that make it clear? And, and, so, so <laughs> and, and, someone, and, and someone might say, um, how does it work in the New Testament covenant? Well, the Bible says it was on the first day of the week where Jesus rose from the dead. It was on the first day of the week uh, where the stone was rolled away and they began to head, behold the fact that he was risen. It was on the first day of the week uh, that the Bible said that um, there was a feast called Pentecost. It was uh, a day where people made a pilgrimage back to Jerusalem. They will all meet at the temple place. And the Bible says that there was something happened on that day. We call it the creation or the birth of the church. Is that right? If somebody asks you, what was the church of Christ established? You take them right there to the birth of the church, right there in Acts chapter 2. Don't have time to get, if you want to hear more about that, come back on 4 o'clock. And we have a Bible study devoted for those kind of things, and we will get into that. Okay, but for right now, I want to get through this. We understand that number two, uh, in worship, we, underline, we consider the path of blessings and cursings. And this is important because the reason for praise, namely uh, the greatness and depth of divine work and purpose of God, right? But it also is against a certain backdrop. In other words, it's against the theme which depicts the struggle of faith with unbelief which are so profoundly and pathetically recorded in Psalm 72. In other words, you can appreciate uh, your salvation position more clearly when you look over at those who are in rebellion against God, those who are rejecting God, and what God has in store for them. It makes you appreciative of the fact that you're on the right side of Christ. Notice, um, those who know not God, they find themselves turning away from God. And then their behavior begins to uh, uh, depict 
the fact that they're turning away from God. You see, in Romans chapter 1, in Romans chapter 1, uh, the Bible begins to talk about this. Uh, in 1 and verse number 18, what does the Bible say? Well, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Okay? So in other words, those who live unrighteously will have a consequence. The Bible calls it the wrath of God. Amen. If you want to shake a fist of rebellion in the face of God, uh, the Bible says, your day is coming. There's going to be a time of recompense, uh, a, a time of reckoning, when the Bible says, and the Lord Jesus is going to come in flaming fire with his angels, yes, taking vengeance upon those who know not God and obey not the gospel of Christ. So therefore, when you look at the calamity and the consequence of the wicked, it gives you a heightened appreciation for what God is doing in your life. Right. And you striving to live a righteous and set apart life. And so therefore, we understand that those who know not God and turn away from God, uh, they become beasts. They become uh, uh, animals. They cast off all restraint. And they become lawless. Uh, and we see a whole lot of lawlessness, you know, in our world today. Yeah, even in our own country. We have folk who are casting off the restraints. And I don't have, I, don't even, I have no regard for the very law I claim to defend. Folk about, talk about, uh, uh, remember Black Lives Matter came up? And then folks are talking about Blue Lives Matter. And the very folk who were saying Blue Lives Matter, when they crashed the Capitol, they were they trying to kill the Blue Lives as well. That's true. That's true. The hypocrisy. This is the world in which we live. But you as saints, you can understand that God, God is always in control. And there is a lot, and see, let me just say this, there is a lot of uh, pretenders in religion who will use religion as a shield and as a cloak to conceal all uh, their mischief and their ungodliness, right. their, their quest for hunger, their hunger for, for power, yeah. control. And they will even use religion as a tool and a vehicle to promote their own agenda. Very well. yep. Yeah, yeah, and, and we, get caught in, we get caught up because we, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, there's certain things about, you know, rights of uh, 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 women's rights and, and, and anti-abortion and, and that kind of thing. But we, un we, don't under we, don't, we don't understand the history, the history of that stuff. Certain movements were trying to win elections, let me go ahead and tell the truth, and they began to use different issues. That's true. And they were throwing mud against the wall to see what sticks. Uh -huh. And this whole thing about pro-life stuck. And they begin to use that. Uh, whether that they believed in it or not, I know they don't believe in pro-life because as soon as the baby born, you don't want to, you want to withdraw the infant meal. You want to take away the food stamp. You, you want to take away all the things that can sustain life. You can't have none of that. I want you to down the sidewalk. But I'm going to use this to promote my, I didn't mean to get off on this. Pro-life. Give me a break. The fool says in his heart there's no God. Uh, the fool rejects God. And guess what? They will be rejected. The wicked spring up like grass, uh, but they will wither and be cut down. Right. They will be destroyed. In Psalm 73, I'm not going to get into a lot of it, but I would like for, to challenge you to go back and read that. Uh, the psalmist has said, you know what? Surely God is good to Israel. <laughs> God is a good God. He said, but you know what? I, I, have to, I have to confess, and you guys have been there too. He said, but when I looked at the prosperity of the wicked, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> he said, my, feet, uh, my foot almost slipped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I can remember when I was in Los Angeles, California. Uh, I was working <coughs> in this place called Save On Books. We were selling Bibles and all that kind of stuff. And we did the strip mall, right? And we had this little, little bookstore, Bible bookstore, and we were selling. We was, we was on it. We were hustlers. I, I wish we could recreate that because all of us were just. Anyway, 
But the bottom line is, and I'm, I'm driving in my little five-speed Datsun B210. <laughs> 1973, this is in the, in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and guys rolling through the strip mall, right, you know, with, with, the, with the bumper kit on the back and, you know, <laughs> you know the, the music is just bumping up. And I'm saying, And I'm looking at all these guys, and I know I'm doing, working for the Lord. Right. I know I'm striving to live a life of righteousness. A whole lot of stuff I put away yes. to do this. And, 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 and my feet almost slipped. Sure. Yeah. And there was a brother named Aaron Whitman. He's no longer with us today, but his father had just passed away. And I was, I was kind of ministering to him. And as we were talking, I, uh, I saw all the, you know, the guys rolling and just, you know. Um, and I said, man. We can't catch a break. And he introduced me to this passage. I was supposed to be edifying him. Um, he introduced me to this passage. And I read this thing. And he talked about how those who are wicked enlarge their mouths against God. How they do everything they think they're big enough to do. And seem to be getting away with it. We have people who are in high places of office who say, I can shoot somebody in the Fifth Avenue and won't do it to me. We got people who have no regard for God right. and say, I'm just big in bed and I do whatever I want to do. Yeah. And then this brother, Aaron Whitney, he, poked, he took me to the passage where he said, oh, he said, my feet almost slipped. He said, but then when I went into the sanctuary, he wasn't talking about when they went into church. He said, when I went into that inner communing space with God and begin to really understand God, uh, then I understood how God regards the righteous. And I then also realized that they were standing on a slippery slope. Amen. Exactly right. That's what I want you to understand. When you understand how good God is, you understand how he has your back. Amen. And you also understand that those who seem to be prevailing through unrighteousness are not getting away with it. Amen. God says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. Let me get through this. I'm going to give you some other point. Not only, uh, this is the testimony of David, speaking of the Messiah. But I want to say finally, in worship, on the line this, we cherish the covenant promises of God. Yes, we do. In worship, we cherish the covenant promises of God. You see, some recent signals of destruction of evildoers seem to be referred to here. Uh, it exemplifies once more the old truth which another psalmist wrote in Psalms 37. You go back and look at that. That the prosperity of the evildoer is short-lived. Yeah, yeah. Amen. It's short-lived. Like the blossoming herbs, like the beautiful blossoming of a flower. It appears in splendor, not only to be cut down in, because it's short-lived. Yeah, you have a beautiful garden, and one day everything's in full bloom, and the next day it's all shriveled up and eroded. eroded. That's how the prosperity of the wicked will be. And we have to understand that. Don't get so caught up in the bloom. Understand that something will be turned into the, in the fire and burned not many days hence. But, and I like that. But itself, and I, I want to uh, share this. We talk about the prosperity of the wicked, right? Being short-lived. But notice this. Even the activities that they engage in are the very activities that can contribute to their demise. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah, it can be the thing that contributes to their demise. So we shall see the ruin of some and hear of the destruction of others. But we, even in the midst of that, we will be able to have calm because we have security uh, and prosperity. God can prosper us in your relationships, in your health, in your associations, in your finances, in all the simple things in your life. God can prosper you if you are adhering to uh, covenant ordinances. Don't get away from that. It ain't like, it's not like that everything's going to go good for you just because you're a Christian. That's true. That's true. No, you have to apply the principles mm -hmm. that are associated with reaping and sowing or whatever. 
and you will reap the harvest that you fain not. Notice, we shall flourish. And I like, see, that's why we celebrate today. Because we know that not only do we have security and protection, but we will flourish. This congregation, the principle is the principle. Regardless of how you apply it, the principle is a principle. If we engage in this kind of praise activity, in this kind of adherence to the ordinance of God, in this kind of sharing of uh, our gospel and, and living in our gospel, yes. Yes. do you not know that the same principle of sowing and reaping, planting and harvest, will prevail with us at 756 Lion Street? Are we willing and bold enough to apply the principles? That's, see, we, we have all that we need. All God is waiting for is the heart to do it. And so I'm challenging all of us to understand that this is why we praise God. But a part of the praise that is lacking will complete the praise where we share our faith and we're inviting more folks to the party. Finally, Finally, we shall flourish in contrast of the community of the unrighteous and the community of the righteous. Our blessings give glory to God. And watch this. Not only do our blessings give glory to God, but they serve as a witness to the world. The world is waiting for us to get our act together. I was watching the program the other day, and I'm, I'm done. And this guy was talking about, he came up through some organized religion. And then when he got old enough, he realized the very thing that he was taught in Sunday school. It was the very thing that, you know, the system and the structure of the church was not even adhering to. And he was talking about how uh, that, uh, that religious group was tooling itself uh, to use religion and politics to stay in control and supremacy in this country. So we have to understand our Bible, because a lot of religious stuff uh, is being used and manipulated so to further a personal human agenda so and has nothing to do with the agenda and purposes of God. Right. And we get duped, and we un don't understand why we are sharing, the Bible says we've got to hear, believe, repent, and folks don't want to hear it because we have been so steeped in different religious nonsense and jargon and miscommunication of truth that everything is suspect. And when you come and share the gospel, uh, <laughs> I was talking to uh, uh, Brother, uh, we were in Bible class on Wednesday, and Brother, uh, uh, I can't think of his name, Brother, he worked on the railroad, Lyle. Lyle. Brother Lyle and Brother Cooper, Brother Lambert, they were making some statements that was right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I challenged them anyway. <laughs> yeah, they were right. Yeah. But the reason why I did that is because it's not about just being right. We have to be able to give an apologetic, a systematic defense of the faith. And, and so therefore, if we're in one passage, and I want to go and use the proof text, and from another passage, somebody else might say, wait a minute, before you go over there, what about this? And so we have to work out of that before we can have the authority to go and get another passage. Amen. Yeah. Let's deal with this one right here. Yeah. And it's not what I'm, dang, I keep doing that. Yeah. I'm supposed to be, in closing. <laughs> I got to clap. I got to be in closing. I got to clap. Um, <laughs> the wicked or the underdean shall be vanquished. They shall be vanquished. But the righteous are uh, exalted uh, and the indication of our eternal Sabbath. See, this, this, this superscription talks about the Sabbath. There is going to be an eternal rest. Right. When all of us, right. when we lay all this down, right. we can have eternal Sabbath, eternal rest with God. And that's what we look for, and that's why we celebrate. Amen. That's why we are able to say hallelujah, praise God, because we understand what God has in store for us. Right. See, if you understand what God has planned for your life, you'll be, <coughs> it'll give you goosebumps big enough to hang your hat on. I, I want to close by saying this. As we stated in the beginning, we worship him because he's so good. <coughs> we praise him because he is good. Amen. His mercies are everlasting. That's right. And his truth endures to all generations. Don't you want to worship him? 
Don't you want to celebrate his goodness in your life? Well, it begins by having an understanding of what God, how good God is. We see the goodness of God through his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. His son so loved the world that he gave his life. And it was the giving of his life that began to set free all of us who were captive. You see, it's because um, his life revealed to us how off we were and how much we had missed the mark and how much we needed a savior. And so therefore, when you understand that you've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and you can't fix it yourself, only Jesus can fix it. And he's already fixed it for you on the cross of Calvary. All you need to do is take the medicine by understanding that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He came to live a righteous life, to fulfill the righteous requirement of the law. Oh, you mean the law that we could not? So God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us that we may become the righteousness of God through him. See, he, 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 he took on our sin. In exchange, he gave us his righteousness. Amen. That's worthy of celebration. Amen. And all you need to do is just obey the ordinances uh, and, the, and, and, and the, the saving power of the gospel. Amen. And Jesus died. He was buried and rose again on the third day. Well, Brother Mary, what makes that so significant? Well, the only thing that makes it really significant is that he was obeying God. And not only was he obeying God, he was fulfilling the righteous requirement of the law. And then he was serving as a substitutionary. He, there was a substitutionary death. He died uh, for you. Because you couldn't do it for yourself. Amen. So now he's asking him, you, you and I, to live for him. <coughs> By embracing the gospel. How does the gospel have its power? By us appropriating the gospel to our lives. Brother Mary, what do you mean by that? Well, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? The Bible says there is a pattern that we must adhere to to appropriate the benefits of his death. See, his, Jesus' death don't mean anything unless by faith we appropriate that, the benefits of our lives by saying, I want to repent of my sins. I want to be buried in the water grave with baptism. Why? Because baptism says, the Bible says, is for the remission <coughs> of sin. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Point blank, period. Amen. And so therefore, when I do that, uh, when, I'm, when I'm buried in the water grave with baptism, when I come up, something stays down. See, that old sinful man yeah. stays down. Yeah. And we rise to walk in the newness of life. And if you're thinking about that, don't get dismayed when you see some Christian with scuba diving suits on, trying to dive down and pick up the old man again. Sometimes we can find ourselves kind of going back. No, 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 let that lie. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far God has separated our sins from us. Right? He has cast all of those sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Now we walk in a newness of life. How you do that? when you're baptized into Christ, when you obey from the heart that pattern of teaching, then we become free from sin. Now we can play with the order if we want to, but the bottom line is when you obey from the heart that apostolic delivered <coughs> principle that was delivered to us on the day of Pentecost, when you do that, it's called the pattern principle. When you do what they did, you'll get what they got. Amen. How about you today? Are you saved? Have you obeyed the gospel, the very tenets of the faith? If there's an issue that you may be uncertain about, well, we'll talk about it. But the bottom line is make your calling election sure. As again, we stand and sing the song of encouragement. I'm glad I know. All right. Uh, brothers and sisters, we came to lift you up, to encourage you, to open up the word of God and stop leaning on your own understanding. Come on, committed. I need you.